For the record, with your host, Alpha Dane Kerr. Hello, and thank you for joining me on yet another segment of For the Record. With me, I have joining me Dr. The Honorable Carlton Mills, the recently appointed Minister of Education, Youth, Sports, and Culture. Dr. Mills is one of the most well-renowned intellectual minds of the Turks and Caicos, and he's also broken ground, having been appointed minister, having not contested a seat in the last recent elections. Dr. Mills, thank you for joining me. It's a pleasure. Thanks for the invitation. Dr. Mills, first off, I must extend congratulations to you on your appointment as Minister of Education, Youth, Sports and Culture. And a lot of persons know you as an educator, but a lot of persons don't know the man, Carlton Mills. <laughs> uh, I was born in South Caicos, I won't tell you the year, and I, I grew up in South Caicos. Uh, I did my early education there and uh, ended off at the Madri Basin High School, which was formerly Pearson High School. Following that, I, I worked for about two years, then I went off to college in Jamaica, Excelsior Community College, where I pursued um, my teacher education program. But to backtrack a bit, um, I did quite a bit of the things that little boys would do in South Cape, because it was, a, as you know, still is a fishing community. So um, I developed this um, likeness for fishing, and um, it became a part of my life, just like it became a part of many adults the lives of adults in South Caicos mm -hmm. and then I went on as I said to, to college in, in Jamaica Excelsior Community College where I pursued the teacher education program mm -hmm. on and shortly after that I went to the University of the West Indies where I pursued a two-year certificate in uh, social work mm -hmm. I always had a passion for guidance and counseling I was hoping to to go into the school and do some guidance and counseling but when I finished the program, I came back home and I was placed at the Madre Basin High School to teach history. I stayed there for a year and then I went on to UWI, the Cave Hill campus in Barbados where I pursued my bachelor's in history and sociology. And following that, I did a diploma in education at London. In 1989, I was appointed as vice principal of the Madre Basin High School and in 1990, principal of the Madre Basin High School. That was a milestone for, for me, being the first local and uh, one of the graduates of the Madre Basin High School to assume the position as principal of that particular institution. Right. And in the process, I did an advanced diploma in education from University of London. And I spent two years at Madre Basin High School, then I was transferred to North Caicos, where I took over uh, the principalship of the Raymond Gardner High School that was in 1992. So I served at the, the Madre Basin High School from 1990 to 92 mm -hmm. as principal and from 92 to 97 at Raymond Gardner High School. And um, in 1997 the uh, opening for the vice principal position at the community college became available and I applied and uh, I, I got the transfer to the community college in, I've been at the community college up to February um, 12th when the appointment was made as Minister of Education. And uh, I also, in the, e even while serving as principal of Madre Basin, sorry, prior to serving as principal of Madre Basin High School, I, in 1989 I went to the UK at the University of Bristol where I did my Master's in Educational Administration. And um, then in 2005, I completed my doctorate in education from the University of Sheffield. Okay. I'm also a member of a number of organizations, educational organizations, and, and including um, ACIA and the Caribbean Association of Caribbean Higher Educators. Mm -hmm. I'm also a member of BELMAS, which is a UK educational organization, which is the British Educational Leadership Management Association Society. Last year, last year I attended the conference in the UK in Birmingham where I presented a paper on school, um, the role of school administrators and I'm looking forward to that paper being published hopefully in, in one of their journals. Dr. Mm -hmm. Mills, I have to ask you, who are some of the fascinating persons that you remember growing up who served as educators here in the Turks and Caicos? Certainly. Um, if I can go back a bit <laughs> to Mrs. Madri Basden in, in South Caicos, um, to Mrs. Iris Stubbs, um, then um, Mrs. Basden is still alive, but um, Mrs. Iris Stubbs is deceased. But one of the persons who had, um, I think the most, uh, I, I shouldn't say the most, but a tremendous 
amount of influence on my life was Mr. Rose, who I, it was my last year in high school at the Pearson High School when he came in. He's now currently a lecturer at the Northern Caribbean University in Jamaica. Um, I had initially wanted to pursue a career in medicine, but because of the limited science subjects that were being offered at the Madre Basin High School, I couldn't do it at that particular point in time. And um, he influenced me to become a history teacher because he taught us history. And I developed a passion and a love for history. And even up to the point when I left the community college, I was still teaching history of the Turks and Caicos Islands. We call it TCI Studies, right. a program that I developed at the TCI Community College in 1998. Oh, okay. But yeah. my brother also had a tremendous amount of influence on me academically, the Oliver Mills, Oliver while Mills. growing up. You have quite a stint as an educator. What made you want to remain in the field of education when so many of your contemporaries moved on or moved away from that field? The desire to see young people improve themselves academically and um, empower themselves through education to be able to take over leadership roles in the Turks and Caicos Islands right. is a pleasure going into banks and seeing students you have taught um, in leadership roles. It's a pleasure going to H.J. Robinson High School and seeing a student, Mr. Lewis, who you taught in high school in the position of a, a principal of the H.J. Robinson High School. And he was also my history teacher. Yes. It's a pleasure going into Cable and Wireless and seeing Mr. Drexel Seymour, CEO of Cable and Wireless, a student you have taught. It's a pleasure going into Digicel and seeing Mr. Jay Saunders as the new CEO of, of, of Digicel a student that you have had some small input in helping to, to mold and be where he is today. That is what has kept me going, seeing students move through the ranks and assume leadership roles. As an educator, that has been the greatest satisfaction that I've had. And um, now that you are at a point where you're in a significant role now as Minister of Education. You never seem to move too far away from no, education. No. But now you're the Minister of Education. Where do you want to see your portfolio move as Minister? What's your vision for the Ministry of Education right. and Sports? Looking at that, um, the passion is primarily for education, but it's, we have to take into consideration that I'm also responsible for youth, sports, and, and culture. culture. And if I can speak a little to education. Sure. Um, you know that uh, we have a serious problem in the Turks and Caicos Islands with reading, literacy. That is going to be the major challenge right now. How do we seriously address the literacy problem in our school? Um, we have been looking at that seriously and, uh, sec and based on that too, we have to also look at the class sizes. You know, we, we always talk about overcrowding in our schools here in the Turks and Caicos Islands, although we have a very small population. Right. But with 30, for example, in, in K1 and K2, okay. looking at the statistics, most of those classes, you're talking about 28 to 30 uh, five-year-old kids. You can imagine one teacher um, having to control 28 kids in a class. The kids cannot get the quality instructions that is necessary mm -hmm. so the greatest challenge one of the greatest challenges right now is to reduce mm -hmm. class sizes right. we want to see over the next year or two or three years mm -hmm. to have class sizes at a, at least a ratio of 15 students to one teacher and at least in the k1 the the main goal mm -hmm. is to make the government public schools mm -hmm the envy of the private schools. In other words, I want to see private schools looking up and being able to model some of the things that the, the government schools do. Our government schools, during my term, I can assure you, will be a model. We want people to appreciate our government schools. We want people to see our government schools where they would want to send their children, not where they don't want to send their children. Right. We are going to change that.